What's going on with my fantasy GMs? That's right, baby. That's right, man. We are finally here, man. We're finally here. What week is this, man? It's, it's week 11. That's crazy, man. Time is flying by super fast, man. The fantasy league has been going. The records have been in coming to fruition. The teams are showing who drafted, who didn't draft good. That's kind of like me. I didn't really draft that well, man. It's kind of showing as we go, man. But, you know, some of us are getting struck with injuries. You know, and that's really what it is. So I'll dive into that a little bit later. But let's go ahead and jump into the standings, man. After 10 weeks, all right, you guys. After 10 weeks, man, here we are. We got Adriel at top seven and three with a three win streak, man. That is nice right there. Three win streak after his team kind of looked a little suspect in the beginning. And then we got Judas sitting at six and four. This dude has had multiple star players be done for the year. And is sitting at six and four with a two win streak. It's very impressive. Meese is a hoe. <laughs> I just said that shit so like uh so like seriously, you know. Meese a hoe. This is just Neil's team right here, man. On a one game win streak, sitting at third in place. He's gotta be feeling good with himself, pulling out victories where he's literally winning by only like 0.5 yards, literally like a couple yards, bro. That shit is hilarious. Green Iron Gang, you know, he's got a one wing streak. Um, sitting at five and five. Look at us, man. Four teams right here. Green Iron Gang, Kyle Shabagahan, Telenorians, and Orange Kush sitting at five and five. And Orange Kush making a supreme comeback. Dante Foreman has saved that man's season. That shit is crazy, man. Telenorians looking like one of the more deeper teams that's sitting at 500. So you know he's trying to surge. And then myself as well, too, man. Dealing with multiple injuries. A bunch of bullshit, really, to be honest with you. But we're still sitting at five and five. You know, the game I beat Swag early in the season was crucial. The one I dropped to Jeff hurts a lot. And it's, this is like a really exciting year. It's probably been the most uh, competitive it has ever been since we've been doing this league. Around 10 years now. Really? 10, 11 years now. Damn, that's crazy, yeah. So, here we go, man. And then we got Mies at the bottom, Fire and Blood. You know, but he's uh, on a one-loss streak. But he was on a... Four, it was about to be on a four game win streak he was that close man so this dude's been surging he's only one place behind the rest of us so the way these standings come out next is going to be crazy you know whoever loses can realistically drop um you know Mies can easily climb up so could swag but swag is dealing with cooper cup on ir so good luck i don't really see if swag can really make up back from that but we'll see man because you know you got me as well dealing with injuries a lot of us are so you never know but these guys are definitely only one place behind so how exciting is that so let's go ahead and look at last week's matchups that's right we're gonna look at last week's matchups before we even jump into this week's matchups okay so last week we had myself losing to michael he had a big week with st brown cd land putting up 38 with AJ Brown only putting up one. What the fuck, man? I just can't run from getting scored on 30-point games by people. You know what I'm saying? My guys did all right, man. It wasn't really the best showing. We had a lot of bye weeks as well, too. You know, we had guys on the bench leave points. It was, it was just sad, man. It was a blunder, to be honest with you. But it's all good. Looking at Telenorians, man. Put up 138 and still lost. That sucks, man. And freaking Adriel, man. You went, you just, you were a fantasy football phenom this whole time, all these years. God damn, bro, that shit makes no sense, man. This dude is killing it, man. And Arnold shouldn't even be five and five, realistically. Uh, Misa Ho six and four, barely wins against Vondigo. Another close, low-scoring win for just Neil. This is like his signature wins at this point. Shout out to him. Somehow he's getting it done. Is it going to catch up to him? Probably, to be honest. But he's pulling out these wins, and he's undefeated against Texas. I know that means a lot more to him than anything else. Um, we had Judas putting up 120. This guy's still putting up points, even though he has injuries, man. Make it make sense. He must be just that deep. And Fire and Blood only putting up 110. Seems about right. His team kind of got back to normal after the three-game win streak. You know, huh? Me, his team got to relax a little bit. But... Still a good showing right there. In the last few weeks, he's been putting up a lot of points. So his team kind of relaxed. And then last but not least, we got Gridiron Gang at 104, man. Another low-scoring win, but it's still a win nonetheless. And a very important one over drinking my cup for seedings, for standings, to get him back up into that top six threshold. Top six makes the playoffs. So get ready for that, you guys. And that's actually going to lead to this week's matchups. We have some crazy-ass matchups, man. People that need victories no matter what based on seating across the board you know and first match we got is Kyle Shabegahan versus Telenorians and honestly I'm gonna coin it now this is match for the week we have similar projection guys on bye weeks as well too like his whole fucking like bench is on a bye week and then you know my team honestly man it sucks I have a really good team I have Hopkins, Jones, Chubb, Flexes, whatever you know we figure it out right um 
great kicker, great two options in defense. It's literally, England and Buffalo are like top three scoring in fantasy football for defense. But this hurts. Darren Waller on IR, Jamar Chase on IR. If these two were plugged in, and then I get Deshaun Watson coming back, I'm great. So it sucks. I have to survive until just Deshaun Watson comes back and hope that something can happen and hope that Chase can come back soon. I've kind of lost faith in Waller. He should be back in three weeks, but if these guys can come back, save my team, that would be nice. we got to pull out some victories in the meantime. Otherwise, we're going to fall down in the standings. Arnold's 5-5. Five and five. I'm 5-5. Five and five. This is a crucial match for the playoffs right here. So we're going to have to see. I did pick up Rashad White. So maybe, you know, not this week, but going forward, he might be a good flex option for me because he's going to be the starter in uh, Tampa. So just, Neil, send me a trade because you know Giselle Bunchton done fucked your team over, man. So send me a trade. You know you need Rashad White. Um, but I'm picking myself. I think every week I have strong options to win. Sometimes I have a couple bad decisions, but I think this week we're going to be solid. We're going to have some explosive games. Aaron Jones is going to set the tone tonight. This video is probably going to come out after that game so hopefully Aaron Jones didn't let me down they didn't uh micromanage or you know load manage that man's um freaking carries and stuff Hopkins you know go kill it man I need a 30 point game the way CD Lamb just did that shit to me but I got myself winning a close one against Arnold to go six and five either way both teams will still be in a good spot for the playoffs but it will hurt the person that loses that matchup so matchup of the week right there y'all already got it next one we got Orange Kush Versus Mies Aho. This is a good one too, man. You know, he's trying to solidify. And just He isn't just you know, trying to solidify himself in those standings to, you know, uh, solidify that spot. You don't want to fall back. You're only two games ahead of Mies, the guy that you talk shit to all day. And then you got Orange Kush, who's 5-5. Five and five. This guy needs to solidify a win to keep his, um, you know, ranking in the standings to go and make a push for the playoffs. Who's going to win this week? This is tough. I'm going with just Neil, not for the sake of being right prediction wise, but I'm literally going for just Neil. I would rather him be seven and four, pull away and solidify playoff spot and knock out my competitors for those last two or three playoff spots. So if Mike can drop a game, that would be nice because if I drop a game this week and he doesn't, then that means him and Arnold will be up on me. And we haven't even touched Jeff yet. And Jeff is five and five. So, you know, very, very important stipulations need here, man. That's facts, all right? So next matchup that we got is Von de Goat versus Fire and Blood. We can already coin this as your toilet bowl matchup of the week. <sighs> Flush that toilet down. A lot of shit in this matchup, <laughs> all right? And then really it's because we got 10th place going up against 8th place. Meese, who was coined as the worst team in the league before Nathan got a concussion and like was like, no, I'll show you the worst team in the league. You know, so we really got two teams that have been struggling, but Mies has been on the come up lately, you know. And with that being said, I'm going with Mies this week. I think Nathan needs to set his lineup, first of all, and he, you know, so that advantage already plays into Mies' hands. And Mies' team has been showing out a lot lately. He's deep at running back. His star player's going off, but Kyler Murray, don't know about Kyler, man. Warzone just came out. Call of Duty been out. He been, you know, not killing it as much. So I don't know how I feel about Kyler, but I got Deshaun Watson for you. If you want Deshaun Watson, he's your original savior. That's originally y'all's GOAT. So, you know, he's there for you if you need him. But that is definitely going to be our Toilet Bowl matchup of the week. Next one we got is Judas versus Gridiron Gang. Same scenario here. I am i don't even give a fuck what the matchups look like. I'm going for Judas, all right? I can't, if Gridiron Gang, Arnold, and Mike all walk away with wins and I get a loss... That is going to really, really put me in a really tough position to try to make the playoffs. So I really need Kels to go off for 57 Sunday night against the Chargers. You know, and shit, Eckler might go off for 57 as well too. Who knows? Jeff has a really underrated team, to be honest with you. Not a lot of people are going to give him the love and praise that his roster probably deserves to get um, for whatever reason, you know. Um, maybe it's because people don't think Jeff um, knows sports like that. I don't know. But... He has a pretty good team. He has this good duo at running back. He got Marquise Brown this week, so he's feeling good about starting him against the Niners. I wouldn't do it. I mean, I'm just going to say that for anybody, right, because I'm a Niner fan. And then, you know, you got Keith as well, too. Really good plays in here. Singletary's production has been so magnificent for him lately. And then Montgomery being the true RB1 now with Herbert out, that should really help um, Keith and Judas right here to really get a good victory this week. So I'm actually going to rock with Keith this week. I think we're just dealing with bye weeks on this side. Yeah, Hill on a bye week. Tua, Tyler Lockett. That's going to be tough, man. So we're going to rock with Keith in this one. And last but not least, Drink In My Cup. What a hard-ass name. Versus Flash Them TDs. Another creative-ass funny name. And in this one, I'm rocking with 
Chino. That's right. Um, Chino has a really good team. They're deep. His running backs um look really good too. And I think that um you know Swag you know, cups on IR man. You got to change that name to Drink in my Barkley or some shit like that. Now you know Park in my Barkley. I don't know. Change it to something else now because your team is literally about to be just Saquon. Maybe even George Kittle, and that's about it. Um, yeah, it's hard to have faith in Swig's team at this point. But, you know, make some moves, man. You got the trade deadline coming up next week. Y'all know what it is, man. Well, these were your predictions for the week, man. Sorry I didn't bring you guys a video last week. It's just been super busy with different things. You know, trying to balance it all out. But this week, we got the video for you guys. And, you know, next week, we're going to keep it going, too. Make sure you guys check out the main channel. I dropped some shorts and some new videos on there as well, too. So show some love, man. Appreciate y'all guys, man. Till next time, baby. We out.